Hello, hello, hello. I'm not Nick, but this is Nick's channel. Uh, so Nick and I have decided that we are going to pull apart, dissect and analyze 10 pairs of hot new season items. We're going to make our picks. We're going to see where we're the same and where we differ. You know, Nick and I, we've both got similar fashion sense and uh, it'd be great if um, we had a little bit of, you know, constructive uh, differences of opinion in this video. So stick around and let's see how it goes. So as Jail very kindly has introduced luxury pads, we're going to be giving you our thoughts on them. Let's see what we match on. I'm excited. I will find out when I watch Dale's video, like you all will, in terms of what her picks are and where we coincided or where we're very much differing. We shall see. I agree with Dale. I think we have very similar fashion senses. So it'll be very interesting to see what our takes are on these particular items. But quickly before I get into that bag of the day, I just thought I would show you and it is my Mulberry Bayswater Trippy Tiger Denim. Love this bag, it was my first Mulberry bag. No regrets, think it's fabulous. There we go, it's a great item. Love it, goes with all I'm wearing. Blue, I'm blue, da ba dee da ba da. You don't deserve me to be singing. You don't deserve that. Anyway, let's get into it. So I'm gonna look at the floor every now and then because that is where I have the list of the items just so I can remind myself. But the first item that we have, we have the YSL bowling bag and we also have the Givenchy Antigona Soft. Two very slouchy bags. These are slightly different in size. The YSL I think is slightly larger than the Antigona, um, but two kind of similar fashion houses I would say in terms of where they sit in the structure between Givenchy and YSL. Now, I think in this particular one, I like them both. I think they're both great bags. I actually really like the quite casual nature of them, but there's a simplicity about both of them. Um, they're both simple, they're both elegant, they're both sophisticated, but there's this quite casual, soft, slouchy smushiness. They're the type of bag that you just want to go up and kind of feel the leather and just feel how smushy it is. Um, I think it, it they look both really, really lovely. Which one wins out for me in this instance? The Givenchy. I've never owned an Antigona. I always thought about buying one of the box leather Antigonas, maybe something in quite a bright colour. But then I saw Steph from Handbag Holic unbox the soft Antigona and I've really had this change of heart. And then I was having a look at the colours and I absolutely love the colour of this particular, this kind of stone colour in this Antigona. I think it's beautiful. It's really, really lovely. Neither of these are a bad pick. Both very practical, both enjoyable. I think they can transition from day bags to evening bags to work bags to travel bags. They have versatility to them, but there just feels to me to be something a little bit more special about the Givenchy. There's a little bit more detail that I think has gone into the design. They paid a bit more attention to the overall creation of the item. I think YSL have really done what they do well, which is simplicity. But in this instance, I think Givenchy have picked them to the post. Now let's think about another set of bags and we're going for top handles again. And we have the Gucci Diana and the Prada Galleria. The Gucci Diana has had a bit of a resurgence um, in the past year or so. I think, was it last year? The start of last year that this came out. They've extended the color range. It comes in a range of different sizes. And then you have the Prada Galleria, which is a really steadfast top handle style from Prada. Um, it's been, you know, the double zip toe and the double bag, and they, they've they often changed the bags. Um, the Saffiano toe, Saffiano Lux, I think it was. Um, have I already said that? Who knows, I can't remember. Um, but the um, Galleria has really become kind of a core part of the Prada range. And it's beautiful, it's structured, it's sophisticated, it's got a quiet sophistication to it. I love the structured nature of it. I think this is a great work bag, an understated work bag. If you just want something you can very easily flip around, looks beautiful but doesn't have to be screaming, I'm designer, look at me, kind of thing. I think this does it very well, however, the Gucci Diana, the mixture of materials, the color that it comes out, the colors that it comes out in. I love the 
um, band that sits around the top handles. I don't know, are those to give it, are those to keep the shape of the top handle? I'm not 100%, but I think it's absolutely beautiful. Saturated colours, love it. Bit of a neon pop with some of those bands. They've done contrast very well in this particular style as well, and it comes in a great range of sizes. So lots of opportunities here. You can use it more as a day bag. It could be a work bag as well. It could be a travel bag. It could be an evening bag if you've got it in a smaller size. Love it. Absolutely love it. I think it's beautiful and worth the price point, I would say. It's also a piece of fashion, hi of fashion history, um, which is nice in terms of the fact that it's had a bit of a resurgence. Um, I love it. Absolutely love it. I think it's beautiful. So if it wasn't clear, my pick, Gucci Diana. Now let's go to a shoe. And platforms are back, people. I love a platform shoe. I love a high heel. I think they're fabulous. There are two competing for the crown of the ultimate platform for kind of end of 2021, start of, sort of through 2022. We are of course talking about the Valentino Tango Pump and the Avitas by Versace. Both have absolutely stunning color combinations. These come out in gorgeous, glorious. The pink and the yellow that I've shown in the photo, stunning. Both are very high. Um, both have substantial platforms, both have substantial heels. There will be a stability, I think, to both of them. Um, both have ankle straps, which although they're a little bit thinner, um, they still hold your foot in place um, to a certain extent. So there's a lot to like about both of these shoes. One of them I would wear hands down, the other one I wouldn't wear if I was gifted them. And I wouldn't, I would love to wear the Valentinos. I would wear the Valentinos, I would rock the Valentinos, I would live in the Valentinos. Stunning, glorious, beautiful, love everything about them. I think they're fabulous, absolutely fabulous. Stunning, wonderful, incredible. The ones that I would not wear, even if I was gifted them, the Versace's. They are clumsy. And I know that's what they're supposed to be. I know that's supposed to be part of the charm of them. I don't find it chic, I don't find it cute. I think there's a lot to like about them in terms of the material that they've been produced in. I love the sheen that this kind of satin gives. Um, love the colours that they brought them out in. Think the dangly Medusa head on one of the ankle straps is gorgeous. Um, but I think they're clumsy. I really, I haven't seen, I haven't seen them styled on Instagram, on a talk show, on a celebrity red carpet that I've looked at them and gone, you've changed my mind on those. I know that part of their charm is that they're oversized. I know that they're supposed to be a little bit clumsy. It's just not a vibe for me. Uh, fair play if you love them and you think, and you make them work for you and for your style. That's fab. If you feel fab in them, that's all that matters. Just don't mind them. Anyway, that's just me. Just my opinion. One person's opinion on the internet. Bless you. If athleisure is your vibe, then 2022 has some bag styles for you because the bowling bag is here. And we have a couple of variations. Um, Dior released their Dior Vibe collection, which included a bowling bag. And then you also have the Gucci by Adidas or Gucci with Adidas collaboration. Now, two quite interesting takes on this particular bag style. One that I think works really well. One that I think should fall into the archives and stay there. So the one that I think should fall into the archives, Dior. Dior, this ain't your gig. Leave it to Gucci and Adidas. Theirs is very successful, love it. Adidas has a sporting pedigree. Gucci, I think, does, does athleisure very well as well. I think that their collections often have quite a relaxed nature to them. I think it suits what they do and I think they've done it very successfully and I like this collaboration. Um, the bowling bag itself, practical style, easy to use. I don't think it's as versatile as perhaps it could be um, because it does very much fulfill that sporting look. Um, and I'm trying to think of how you could potentially use that any way that isn't kind of daytime. I don't really know. That It would take a little bit more thought. Um, uh, but then I think, I don't think you buy the um, Gucci by Adidas for anything other than that, really. I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong if you own it. Did you buy it for an evening? If so, how are you styling it? Love to know. But Dior, sorry, this ain't it. This is not working. Um, they lent into the theme, respect for leaning into the theme. However, you didn't need to lean into it as hard as you have. It's, it's not chic. 
it's not elegant, it's not sophisticated, it's not particularly sporty. It's, I think they've tried to make it feel a little bit retro, but I don't think they've done it well, if I'm honest. And for that price point, I'm sure it's beautifully made, don't get me wrong, I'm sure it's beautifully made, but I don't think they've managed to achieve the goal of creating something that feels sporty but a bit chic and a little bit kind of retro and uh, mm, certainly not at that price point it looks a bit tacky to me it looks cheap to me like i said i'm sure it's beautifully made but i don't think it looks as good as it will be made if that makes sense i don't love that I don't love either of them, if I'm honest. They're not my style, either of them. However, I think one is far more successful than the other. And if it were my money, if someone said, Nick, you have to have one, I would 100%, without hesitation, take the Gucci and Adidas. Still isn't my style, but it is, for me, the far more successful version of this particular style. Ooh, the sandal. Ooh, the sandal. There have been some great variations of these over the years. Designers have been bringing them out. I'm loving that we're seeing collaborations when it comes to this particular style. But two heavyweights in this particular segment are Birkenstock, I think, um, from more of that kind of contemporary high street perspective. And then you have Chanel from a designer perspective. However, I absolutely love that Manolo got in on the action. They said, we see your Birkenstock and we're gonna work with you and we're going to bling this up and we're going to elevate. Love that for you, Manolo. Thank you so much. And I was really, really enjoying these Manolos. As it happens, I like both. I like both of these. I think there's a charm to both of these sandals. I think that the Chanel ones are chic. I like the fact that there's a number of variations of them. Are they comfortable? I would hope that they would be comfortable. They look like they would be, but there's a simplicity to them whilst also having a bit of a logo behind them. So I really do like them. I also love the Manolos. I love that there's this elegance to the Manolos. I also feel that the Manolos could be worn in a number of different fashions. I think you could wear these a little bit more casually. I could imagine these being worn with jeans and a t-shirt and throw these on just to give it a little bit of something blingy. I also feel that you could wear these if you wanted a Birkenstock style shoe for let's say a wedding and you wanted it to still feel a little bit more sophisticated but you wanted something that was very comfortable or flat this could be a great option for you. They come out in a beaut they come out in a beautiful range of colours as well. Like I said, both are successful. Where would my money go? Manolo and Birkenstock. I just love the novelty of it. I think it's a very successful collaboration. It was a little bit unexpected for Manolo, I think, as well. Particularly from my view. I love Manolo. I would I would like to own a pair of Manolos one day. Um probably a Hangisi 105, I would say. Um, but I saw this as a little bit unexpected and that really piqued my interest. And when I started to see the unboxings of these, I thought that's interesting and I like it. And I want to know more about it. I want to, I, there hasn't been an item that's intrigued me quite like the Manolo Birkenstock in a long time. And I found myself searching for content on it, not because I was looking to buy them, but because I was intrigued by them. So I really, really like that. Um, I like the Chanel ones. But I also feel like I've seen the Chanel ones quite a lot recently and I'm a little bit bored of the narrative around the Chanel ones of, oh, they're ugly, but they bought them anyway because they're Chanel and I kind of think, you like them, just admit you like them. So yeah, I, I like them both, but I actually think content on the Chanel ones has put me off them, whereas content on the Manolos has made me more for them. There we go, Manolo wins this one. But, a close call, close call. Like them for different reasons, but Manolo wins out. Ooh, ha ha. More heels, and this time we're talking kind of ankle sock boots. We've got another collaboration. We have Jimmy Choo by Moogla, or Jimmy Choo in collaboration with Moogla, and Balmain. Moogla is really having a moment at the moment. I love Moogla. I love the risque nature of it, the fun. It is sophisticated and stylish and sexy and, oh, I love Mugla. I think the styles are absolutely 
wonderful. And I think Jimmy Choo is beautiful as well. In the same way Manolo is beautiful, I think Jimmy Choo has some stunning styles as well. But then there is something about Balmain that just captures me. I've never bought a piece from Balmain. I would really like to own a Balmain jacket one day. I've looked at some of their ready-to-wear. I have looked at their shoes. I've looked at their bags. They've got some really interesting collections across the whole piece. Um, but I happened to see these um, ankle boots from Balmain and I fell in love with them. And I just love the heel. I love the pattern. I just think they're stunning. Absolutely stunning. They are hot, hot shoes. And in my mind, they win out over the Mugler. Um, I actually think they'd be more versatile. I think you could wear them with more outfits. I prefer the heel on them. The Mugler by Jimmy Choo or Jimmy Choo by Mugler will be more comfortable. I think the proportions of the heel will enable it to be a little bit more comfortable, but I just think the Balmain heel is so made. It is pointed and sexy and tall and, oh, glorious. Love it. That, that with a tailored tuxedo. Oh, stop. Stop! Love it. I think it's beautiful. The Jimmy Choo's in collab with Mugler. Beautiful. Love them. But they also, I'm not one for trend, but I do also worry that they could date quickly. I also worry they could damage easily. Let me know if you own them. Are they like a neoprene? Is that kind of the materials that you're working with? I worry about them getting damaged or I worry about them getting dirty. And once that gets dirty, you know, let's say you're just out in London on a night out and it's been raining a couple of hours before and a car splashes you or you get some flecks of dirt flick onto them. Are they going to be salvageable? Can they be washed? Can they be cleaned? How does that piece work? I feel like I would be much more comfortable wearing the Balmain shoes. My feet would be less comfortable, but I would personally be more comfortable in the knowledge that, <laughs> in the knowledge that they would be okay if, you know, they got a bit of dirt on them. I could wash them, I could clean them, I could make it work. I'd worry more about the Mugler's. Although my feet would thank me Worf for wearing the Jimmy Choo with Mugler because I think they just look more comfortable. But sometimes you just have to go with what feels right. And I like them both. They're both lovely. I'd wear them both. I'd own them both happily. If someone gifted me them, I'd happily rock them both. But if someone said, right, Nick, here's the money. You can buy one or the other. I'm going to Balmain and I'm going to rock those things. Oh, imagine that. Wearing the Balmain during the day and the Valentinos at night. What a heel collection. Love it. Now let's talk jackets. And we're going to talk about two jackets that come from designers that I don't think you would necessarily say are comparable in terms of their overall aesthetics. But that's what makes this fun. So we have the Kenzo Quilted Trench and we also have the Burberry. Burberry? Why did I say it so weirdly? Burberry? Mm. Um, Burberry Waterloo Trench. Both are lovely. Both are very sophisticated, both have a simplicity to them. Um, I really like Burberry trenches. I own one myself. The thing that I have learned with them is that if it was going to be my money, I personally wouldn't buy a Burberry one. I own a Burberry one, I never wear it. I don't feel comfortable in it. I don't feel like it suits me. So I struggle to wear it. I've owned one for three or four years and I've probably worn it a handful of times. If that, I could count on one thing, on one finger. What am I talking about today? I'm not with it, am I? I could count on one hand the amount of times that I have worn that jacket. So in this, to that avail, I'm going Kenzo here. I really, really like the padded nature of this. It's, it just adds a texture to the overall coat that I think is really lovely. Um, I love the colour, this kind of khaki um sort of greyish khaki um i think it's beautiful love the texture of it love the dimension that the quilting gives it still is a very sophisticated elegant shape um but it's done in a slightly more modern way i feel that the burberry is a beautiful classic um and i love it when i see it on other people um just for me and my wardrobe it doesn't work quite as well i actually think it'd be really nice to have something that has a little bit more of an edge to it and for that reason, I'd be going for the Kenzo. The Kenzo is also cheaper than the um, Burberry as well. So, you know, in the grand scheme of things, that's always a win. Love to spend less if we can. So, 
I'm going Kenzo here. But I like both. I like both very much, but I'm going Kenzo. Now this one, I cannot wait to see what Dale says. It's mean of me that I'm excited to see what Dale picks because I know that this one will be really, really hard for her. We're going to Fendi and we are talking about the Fendi peekaboo or the Fendi first. Which is the preference? Oh, Dale, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but I'm very intrigued by the answer. Anyway, both of these bags are beautiful. They're obviously very different styles of bag. They have different functionalities to them. Um, I think the occasions that you would use them probably can overlap, but a top handle versus a kind of shoulder clutch bag can often be a bit different. However, the fact they both have shoulder straps means that you could use both as a day bag. You could detach those and dependent on your personal style, you could potentially use both as an evening bag if you wanted to. So I do think that is a certain amount of crossover. It just all depends on how you style them. Now, I'll be honest, when I first saw the Fendi first, I thought, oh, here's another version of like a Bottega pouch. Hasn't that been done already? What are they bringing in that's new? I have to admit, I've eaten my words. The more I have seen the Fendi first be styled, be used, be unboxed, be, yeah, demonstrated how it can be worn, the more I have thought that's a really beautiful bag and I can see how it differentiates itself from bags within the same category on the market. However, could I see myself ever owning one myself? No, I can't. I think they're beautiful and I think they're great for other people. I would every time pick a peekaboo just because I love a top handle bag. I love the way that you can style a top handle bag. I, I also don't wear bags on the shoulder. So whilst I love the fact that you can wear the first and the peekaboo on your shoulder if you wanted to, or probably crossbody, it depends on the strap you buy or if you get an extra one or a different one, um, you could give them that bit of versatility. I know I wouldn't. So the first for me would be exclusively a clutch that massively cuts down the opportunities to use it. The peekaboo you could use as a day bag, evening bag, work bag, depending on the size. I'd probably go for a medium or a large. Um, and they come out in such a beautiful range of colours. Both do, but I really do love the variations that the peekaboo um, is, is created in. Particularly, I love the ICU um, peekaboo, and they did that in this beautiful white with a pink interior. Absolutely love that. They're both stunning, they are both stunning, but for my life and the way that I would look to use them, I would I would go for the um, for the peekaboo. And although I'm a bit of a convert when it comes to liking the Fendi First, would that ever convert to ownership of a Fendi First? Even with an unlimited budget, it wouldn't be a bag that I would go for. And I have to say, I would buy the Bottega pouch over the Fendi First. Not with, not pouch with chain or anything like that. The strict Fendi, the kind of strict clutch um, Bottega pouch, I would buy that over a Fendi first. But the peekaboo would win in this particular round. Now a little bit of fine jewellery. Who doesn't love a bit of fine jewellery? And a little bit of bling for the wrist today. So we are looking at the Boodles Blossom Charm, which is in this beautiful rose gold with diamonds. And then we also have the Bulgari Open Work bracelet as well, which again is in kind of a rose gold with diamonds. Both are stunning. Both are absolutely stunning. Um, love the fact that the Boodles has this kind of daintiness to it. It has this quiet sophistication about it. Um, and I really like the Boodles collection in general. I don't own any of their pieces. They're not within my price point, but I think they're absolutely stunning. I think there's a simplicity to them. There's an elegance to them. There's a softness about them that I really, really love. By contrast, you have this Bulgari piece, which again is absolutely gorgeous, but I love the fact that it feels more like hardware. It has some depth to it. It has some, it's chunkier. And I really, really like that. There is a softness in terms of the materials that have been used with the rose gold and the diamonds, but then it's a little bit hefty. And I really, really like that. This would personally be my pick out of the two. Both are beautiful and I think that the um, Bulgari will probably be heavier than the Boodles. Um, so in terms of how you want to wear it, that could be a factor. 
but just in terms of the overall aesthetic and how often it would get used, if someone were to say, Link, you could have one or the other, I would go for the Bulgari um, because it just, it, it would work much better with my wardrobe. Um, it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And last, but certainly by no means least, if you came for an opinion, you are going to get one on these two items. We have the Chanel 22 and the YSL Eye Care Shopping Bag. I think that's what it's called, Eye Care? Yeah, we'll go with that. I loathe both of them. Both of them. One is more terrible than the other. The Chanel is more terrible than the YSL. Marginally. I cannot stand them. What were they thinking? I can kind of understand what YSL were maybe thinking in terms of the hobo style with the material that they've used. To, it's just too big, that's the problem with that bag. It gets, the material I don't think works for the size of the bag. It just feels, it feels a bit drab. It feels oversized, but not in a sophisticated or a chic or successful way. It feels, it feels to me like it was at some point a medium sized bag that someone put a really heavy book in and it just, the material just stretched. That's how it looks to me. I really don't care for it, particularly. Would it be practical? Probably. I wouldn't want to wear it, I wouldn't want to carry it. I don't know how I would wear it. And then the Chanel 22. I have said it before, I think I used the word hideous, no, I used the word ghastly. I stand by it. I stand by it. Terrible. Terrible. And the high gloss material makes it worse. Makes it worse. It looks like a very, very expensive bin liner. Chanel do some very beautiful pieces. Chanel get some, Chanel get a lot of things right. This they got wrong. And what also, what I think I like even less about it is they then tried to make it fancier. They had this glossy, slightly bin liner-esque body of a bag. They then threw some logos on it. They then threw some chains on it. They tried to, they tried to spruce it up with hardware. I actually think it makes it look cheaper and less sophisticated. They just shouldn't have made it. I'm sorry. They just shouldn't have made it. They make some beautiful pieces. They do some very good things. In terms of a tote bag, leave the large tote slash Deauville alone. Let that be your tote bag. Let that be your shoulder bag, your kind of carry all, your never full competitor. Let that do that job. Why you felt the need to jump in with the 22, I don't know. Should have picked a different material. It comes in some beautiful colours, I'll say that for it. It's a shame. It's a shame, particularly if they want this to be one of their signature bags. Is this going to be a classic? Can this be a classic? Oh, I don't know. And. I'm sure there'll be people who love Chanel who will probably be thinking, well, what do you know? You've never bought from Chanel. And I certainly won't if this is what they're bringing out. Oh my word. Love a classic flap. Love a reissue. Love a Coco handle. Love a trendy. They do some really beautiful bags. Love the kind of Deauville. Um, I think the boys, interesting. Even the Gabrielle I've warmed up to. This, no. No, 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 no. I would take the YSL, but the YSL is still pretty terrible as far as I'm concerned. This bag just doesn't do very well. If I was going to go for a hobo style bag, I'm going on the pre-love market, I'm going to Mulberry and I'm buying a Daria hobo. That's where I'm going with this. Anyway, not my style of bag, certainly not one that would be on my list, but if it was on my list, these two would not be it, and especially not at their three, four, five grand price points. So there we are, everyone. I told you you would get an opinion. And I'm interested to hear what yours are. I'm so intrigued as to what Dale's are going to be as well. Let's see what we match on. And let's see if we love something, if we love it for the same reasons. And if we don't like it, do we not like it for the same reasons? Anyway, thank you so much as always for joining me. And I look forward to seeing my next video. Take care, everyone. Bye now. Mwah.